you take that perspective here, and that's why you lose. That's why you lose, because you looked at it like, well, people escape with karma, with money, they can, we can manipulate. Not this time. Not this time. I promise you, you cannot manipulate when you have a high-ranking spiritual person. It could be, it could, it could be, sometimes it could be on the dark side. You have someone that's very dark into, into the dark arts and you attack that person. Now you, you're just a natural, everyday person, but you ran up on a witch and you attacked a witch, right? You're going to have some problems. You're going to have some problems. You're going to have some problems because they are con you 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 would not be able to manipulate the because they're spiritual you may not be able to manipulate and escape the karma you've already done wrong right there's a karma that comes just with doing wrong but when you attack someone that's spiritual it's harder to escape the karma even if it's a witch it's harder to escape the karma you might try to Put money around uh, against the person. You may try to kill the person. It won't work. And then they kill you. So. I say all that to say this. When you, when you, when you attack someone that's spiritual. The karma game is a whole different ball game. That's a seven. I know you thought everybody was everybody. And that's how you're looking at it. You must be. You thought everybody was everybody. But if you attack specifically a spiritual person, the karma game is going, on your side is going to be totally different than you attacking these people out here that are not spiritual. It's not the same situation. And I gave you a, a, a perfect example. If you attack a witch... The karma game is going to be different, bro. The karma game ain't going to be out here like you mess with one of these hoodlums. <laughs> you approaching people like everybody's a hoodlum. That part. Like we hoodlums out here. Everybody's not a hoodlum. That's no disrespect. Everybody's not a hoodlum. And so you, you, you know, you Americans roll around halfway acting like a hoodlum yourself, and you think you're going to attack everybody as if they're a hoodlum, and now you got a problem. You have to identify your enemy. You can't just make me be something I'm not. You don't have the luxury of manipulating like that. Yeah, and that's why you're getting what you're getting. Now you see why you're getting what you're getting. Because you looked at me like I'm a hoodlum. That part, yes, you did. You had to have. Or be, or you was ignorant of spiritual laws. And no matter what you see me do, and no matter what you how you see me do it, you have to obey spiritual laws or lose. You don't have the luxury of redefining anyone, even when you see a contradiction you still don't have the right to redefine that person in spiritual war. In spiritual war, you still don't have the right to redefine the person based on things that you see them do. You don't know. You can't be absolutely sure. But I tell you one thing, if that person has professed that they are a Christian, if they have done that, I don't care what you see them do. I don't care if you see them smoking weed. I don't keep I don't care what you see them. I don't care what you see them do. It's better safe than sorry with playing with that person. It's better safe than sorry. Somebody tell you they're a Christian, or you see them doing spiritual things, you definitely do. You definitely do see them do spiritual things. You definitely do, right? It's better to be safe than sorry. 
<laughs> Ain't nobody playing. You you don't have the right to, to define people. All you can go by is what people tell you. And if they give you enough information that they're a Christian, you better back up off that. Because, see, what you do is you look at what you done seen in society. Oh, well, that person is just another backslidden Christian. Or whatever, whatever, whatever terms you use, whatever terms you use. But you, 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 God still can have his hand on that person. God can still be with that person and you will lose. Especially if you playing games and the things that the sins that they're doing, whether they're drinking or smoking. Is 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 a result really based on the frustrations of things that you're doing, then God's going to have mercy. I'm telling you what I know. In other words, if you've been playing around this person and then it led them to smoke weed, it led them to drink, it led them to smoke, God is still having mercy. God is still going to have mercy because he knows that if none of that was going on, then that person wouldn't even be smoking and drinking. God is a compassionate God. God is a God of understanding. He understands. He knows real definitions of things. That's the seven. Even when the person is sinning, he knows the absolute definition of the motives of that sin. So if you're causing that, or you're frustrating that person, or you, are you, are you playing around that person? God is going to consider that, which still makes them innocent. And you, because he's covering them with his mercy and his mercy, make, his mercy makes them innocent. See, what you got to understand with the law of mercy, it's, it's given to those who don't deserve it. When it comes from God, obviously mercy needs to be given when something went wrong, right? Or something, the person did something wrong and they, they need another outcome besides what they actually deserve. The law of mercy would get the law of mercy would get your enemy killed. Well, God said he gives mercy to the Bible says he God gives mercy to who he wants to give it to. And I'm paraphrasing. These are laws that dictate the you that, that control the universe. Yeah, you forgot about the law of mercy. It's not just a saying, it's an activity. That's a seven. Mercy is an activity. A spiritual activity from God, God's mercy. So with mercy, as we established, is giving you an outcome that you shouldn't have gotten. You're getting the outcome that you don't deserve. You're getting a different outcome. That's a seven. So if God is giving a person a different outcome than what they actually should have, and you attack that person when they're getting a different outcome, regardless of what they're doing, then you're still in trouble. You're still in a bad situation. So you may be attacking a prophet of God, a woman of God, a man of God, and you're thinking, well, they're drinking and smoking. We can attack that. That ain't that ain't no Christian. But you don't know if God has extended mercy. You don't know if God has extended the law of mercy, and you don't know how long he's going to extend it. And I can tell you this for sure. I can tell you this for sure. If you have been attacking that person, if you have been playing games, spiritual, psychological games, all kind of stuff, accusing them and all the kind of stuff you've been doing, God is going to extend a different outcome because of what you're doing. Yeah. He's considering that. God considers what you're doing. I know the devil ain't going to like mercy. The devil's people ain't going to like mercy. But God will give the mercy regardless, in spite of your disliking of it. And if you cross, that's another thing. If you cross over the mercy, 
the different outcome that God gave that person, you're in trouble as well. It's, it's just, it's, it's, it's right up there with stepping over the sacrifice of Jesus Christ and, and digging up someone's old sins and you're just spitting on that sacrifice of Jesus Christ. That's what you're doing. When you dig up somebody's sins, you're spitting, and they came to Christ, you're, you, and you know that that is cleansed from their life, you're spitting on the sacrifice of Jesus Christ. That's very dangerous. That's very dangerous. That could prove very fatal. <laughs> and it's the same thing with mercy. If that person, if you step over that mercy, that different outcome that God gave that person, you're in trouble. You're spitting on the mercy of God. You're spitting either on the, 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 the sacrifice of Jesus Christ to cleanse that person from their sins, or you, you're spitting on the mercy of the different outcome that God gave that person. I don't care what you see them do. You better determine whether God has given them mercy or not. That's a seven. <laughs> before you attack, before you attack someone that's a Christian, that's, that I don't, if they said it out their mouth, that's enough to take a precaution. That's a seven. And you better make sure before you attack that person, that God has not decided to give them, that God has, has not decided to give them a different outcome. If you have not, if, you, if, if they have a different outcome, you still see God blessing them, you still see God with them, that means he has extended a different outcome and and um, you, it's nothing really. If you attack that, you you it, it can prove fatal. It can prove fatal. You cannot attack that different outcome that God has given that person. If you even if you see them sinning, if you see them sinning and God is blessing them, God is protecting them. You see, you can see that there's repercussions for playing with that person's life. Then that means. God is constantly giving them different a different outcome. He's constantly doing it. And he's more likely to do that if you are constantly attacking that person and they're innocent. He's going to give them a different outcome over and over again. And you can't beat it. You cannot beat it. And if you you want to be in the business of thinking you can beat God's mercy and beat God's the, the sacrifice of Jesus Christ, you're going you're going to understand. You won't win. You will not win. See, arrogance <laughs> proves nothing. <laughs> you can be arrogant and think you can attack God's people. It, it don't prove anything. Let let's look at what's actually happening. Let's look at what's actually taking place and look at your country. Your country is in shambles. Your country is, is, is in shambles because you thought you could step over the sacrifice of Jesus Christ and the mercy of God, giving that person a different outcome. So when you, when you, when you size up an, a Christian and you say, well, I think we can attack this when he's smoking, he's drinking. You better, you better hope, you better hope that God has not constantly extended a different outcome for that person on a daily basis. If God has that per person covered in a different outcome, which is mercy, a different outcome than what they should have, if he's covered them in that, you're in trouble. You, you, you have to determine whether God is extending mercy. If he is, you're in trouble. I don't care how many cigarettes you see him smoke. I don't care how much you see him cuss, drink. If he's constantly giving them a different outcome that's apparent, God doesn't give mercy to people for you to attack them. That's a seven. He doesn't give them a different outcome and say, 
Well, you still can attack him and beat him up and do all this stuff. But I'm giving him a different outcome every day than what he should have. It's not going to work like that. When he's giving them a different outcome, everything is in place. It's, his protection is in place. His love is in place. Him in their life is in place. And that means you will be destroyed by God's wrath because that's the outcome that he's giving when he's giving them a different outcome daily and on a daily basis. When he's covering them with a different outcome, he will attack you. God will attack you with his wrath because when he's giving them a different outcome, that different outcome is them being where they should be with God. Him being, them being where in their spiritual place where they should be as far as what God is doing in their life. And if you attack them and they're in the place where God is doing everything for them and how he should do it for them, then you will get attacked by God. These are spiritual laws that you must realize. See, one thing about, about me, I individualize everybody. I'm, I individualize everybody. I don't, I, I, and I overestimate everybody. I don't go around being arrogant, underestimating people and, 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 um, and, and make, and redefining them, making them something that they're not. I, I overestimate, which means I cover all my bases. I don't know what this person is capable of. I don't assume anything. I study my enemies. I don't assume, oh, this person's nothing. In arrogance and just be a prideful, arrogant person where we're just going to attack this person. No, you need to, if you don't know your enemies, if you just attack someone that you have not individualized, you are a fool. I individualize everybody. I don't care. I don't care what anyone says what category they put them in how they what box they put them in i individualize everyone i individualize everyone and 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 i overestimate everyone this way in war i have overestimated this person which means when you over in my definition when you overestimate you have covered all your bases of all the outcomes of what this person is. I overestimate. I individualize. Okay, this person is white, but that doesn't mean he's all he's like all white people. <laughs> this person is black, he's not like all black people. This person is Hispanic or Latino, but they might not be like all Hispanic and Latino people. Same thing with me. When you looked at me, you may have sized me up Okay, face value, he, he looks African or of African descent, he looks black. Okay, what most stupid people do is you begin to uh, go by your path, your, your, your experience, your, your, uh, especially it's, you'll find out that a lot of skilled men of war make this mistake. They profile you, basically. They profile you... Um, Based on a cookie cutter situation, oh well, we know they probably he's probably going to do he's this that and the third he's probably he's probably going to do this. You're saying all these probably's probably's because you're going by experiences or some information that you've been given. I individualize every person. This person may have lived in Cambodia. They might be black, and you may have missed a part of their life where they were living in Cambodia. That part. But they're here in New York, but they lived in Cambodia. So, would, and, and they got a spiritual awakening there in Cambodia, and they became very powerful spiritually in Cambodia. This is an example. Now, you didn't know they went to Cambodia. You, you just seen them, and you didn't individualize them. If you had individualized them, then you would probably find out that they went to Cambodia. But because you didn't even do your research, you didn't see where they went and you didn't know where they went. You, you just you just put them in a box 
You just cook, you put them in a cookie cutter situation and now you, your whole country's messed up because you didn't individualize me. You didn't, you, you just thought I was just another hoodlum or some, some guy from the hood, from the hood or from the ghetto and you didn't real and you didn't individualize me. You didn't overestimate me either. You didn't cover all your bases. If you covered all your bases, you wouldn't be in the situation you're in. So you did that's the mistakes my enemies made. They 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 underestimated me and they didn't individualize me. Big mistakes in warfare. Big mistakes. Which proves to me to be an amateur, to be a novice. You're a novice to me if you do not in war, individualize and overestimate. I don't go around pridely underestimating anyone. It will prove destruction in your life. I, you know, you know, you can sit up and think someone is, is some pushover and they not. You can, for your own arrogance and ego sake, that I guess that's what it's for. But it will prove fatal if you have underestimated that person. And you'll be in hell talking about, I underestimated that person. I underestimated what they were capable of. Capable of. I should have individualized them outside of their American culture and outside of their, their uh, the ethnicity that they come from. Because just because I'm black, you can't size me up. That's a separate. So you, you sized me up based on being an African-American. Oh, well, he's probably like this. He probably likes that. He probably come from this. He probably knows these people. He probably listened to this. He probably watched that. And then you, 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 you make this mold. But what you forgot about was my spiritual walk with God, which is way, which has nothing to do with America. Christianity has nothing to do with America. Christianity is not even American, an American religion. So you forgot about that part. Why you was um, why you was sizing me up, underestimating me, and not individualizing me, just throwing me in the basket with other with the rest of the black people here, and you lost. That's how you lost. I, I, that's exactly how you lost. Why are you in the situation you're in? Then can you explain it? Because you play with a spiritual person not realizing that. That's why you're in this situation. I don't care who it is. I don't care who's doing it. It don't you see me worried about who actually is doing what? I don't care who it is. Whoever it was underestimated me and did not individualize me. <laughs> you know, I always do my homework on my enemies. I always do my homework. Not things I want to know, not things I find interesting. I do my full homework on my enemies. You, if you, and I'm telling you, if you are a soldier and you're you're going around with arrogance, underestimating your people, underestimating people around you, you will lose. If you go to a country on the behalf of another country. And you, you come in thinking, yeah, we're just going to do this. We're just going to do that. And you underestimate those people's skills, you'll be dead. You'll be in hell and dead. You'll be dead in hell. That's why I don't underestimate anyone. I don't, I individualize everyone. That's what I do. That's what I do. I see somebody walking down the street. I ain't going to just say, oh, well, that's just another Another white guy. No, I'm going to look how he moves. I'm going to look at what he's doing. That's what I'm going to do. See, in America, when in America probably, I'm going to tell you this, and it's probably, it's probably accurate. America went to Vietnam, right? They lost that war. Nobody likes to say it straight out. America lost the war in Vietnam. We know that, right? They did not win the war. What you, you hear a lot of people receiving medals about in the Vietnam War, concerning the Vietnam War, Vietnam vets, this, but what they don't tell you is they lost the war. And I guarantee you they went over there thinking that Vietnam 
was unsophisticated. I guarantee you that. Well, if you had overestimated your enemy, you wouldn't have lost. How can you lose if you overestimate your enemy? How can you lose? How can you lose if you overestimate your enemy? You can't lose. You can't lose. When you underestimate your enemy, when you overestimate, you cover all bases. You cover every outcome and you overkill. You overkill until it's no possibility of your enemy surviving. This is overestimating. I guarantee you in the Vietnam War, I'm not saying I, I, I just I'm thinking about American arrogance. And it is practice in, in institutions, by the way. Well, look how arrogant the cops are. <laughs> look how arrogant the cops are. That part seven. Boom. Pretty sure military probably a little bit arrogant, too. Your government is arrogant. Look at Donald Trump. So culturally speaking, you're pretty arrogant people, which would mean to me that you would sometimes underestimate your enemies. And, prove, and, and, that, and, and the fact that it's proven that you're arrogant by culture, you probably was arrogant in the back then in the Vietnam War. And you probably went over there thinking these are unsophisticated Asian people that don't have you, you didn't individualize you didn't individualize them. You thought this is just an Asian country. I guarantee you they thought like that. This is an Asian country. They didn't individualize these Asians. They didn't individualize them. And they underestimated them. I guarantee you they went over there with that arrogant ego, that arrogance, and they and, and that's why they lost the war. I guarantee you. I guarantee you. If far as strategy, they probably was a little arrogant. Oh, okay, we could just do this and do that. When you know you should have did way more. Let's put it like this. The strategy that America probably would have if they went to Russia, fighting Russia, was probably not the strategies that they used when they went to Vietnam. Going to Russia, they probably would bomb, 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 overestimate because it's Russia. But they thought they could go to Vietnam, this little country, and they lost. And I guarantee you, they lost that war based on underestimating their enemies. And that underestimation came from American arrogance, which you still practice now. You still practice this arrogance now, today. And this is the next Vietnam. This is the second Vietnam. You're going to lose. You have underestimated me. You have underestimated what I'm capable of. And you did not individualize me. I'm with the kingdom of God. I told you. I I made this very clear. I'm not some Christian that hides their Christianity. I make it clear to anybody. I'm a grown man. I, I'm not like a little teenager trying to, trying to hide my Christianity because my peers might think I'm not cool. a joke I'm a grown man I, I know I need God I need God to do some things grown men understand that so why am I going to be ashamed that part that part so see in the end really this is all about arrogance the Bible says pride comes before destruction Pride comes before destruction. I don't care what group you come from. I don't care who you are. You can be thugs, gangsters, the Chicago Bulls. I don't care who you are. You can be a secret society. I don't care who you are. If you practice, if you underestimate your enemy and you don't individualize your enemy and you were wrong about what you estimated, and, you, and how you uh, size them up as a person, you're going to lose. This is the second Vietnam. Because of the secret society, the Illuminati, and Freemasons, and the Freemason police, and 
This is the second Vietnam. Oh, I'm very aware. I'm very aware. This is the second Vietnam because of them. In this second Vietnam, I'm telling you, I'm going to be rejoicing like the Vietnamese people. I'm going to be rejoicing like the Vietnamese people. The Vietnamese people are, I'm sure they rejoiced when they won the war. Arrogance will is is not is 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 not something that one should practice. And you know, it's one thing to have confidence. It's one thing to to be sure of who you are and sure of your capabilities, but it's another it's another thing to be arrogant. Arrogant is a blind perception of oneself or abilities, not considering all elements, not considering another person's individuality and their capabilities and who they are and what they're capable of doing. It's not a nice trait to have. Being cocky is not is is a it's a flaw. <laughs> cocky people wind up in the hospitals all the time. Accidents, driving around cocky and arrogant. People drive cocky. Yeah, I'm just gonna make this turn. I'm just, yeah. now you're in the hospital. It's it, that's why real warriors understand these principles. You know, you, you know, you, you walk around arrogant. Okay, it, it'll last a while. It might feel good for a while, but I guarantee you, your arrogance is gonna catch up with you. And I guarantee you, where it's gonna catch up with you is where you underestimated something. Something you underestimated. Something